pay for me. Okay. Ellie and Michael, come. Two of you put up your hands. Stand, children. Stand. Go on. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us to the day. I pray that as as we reach the end of Children's Corner, that we that we might go to the rest of this church service with glad, with happiness. And I pray that what 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 we learn from this church service will stay in our hearts and our minds. So. So let us do the right thing today. And I pray that and I pray to all of us that we might be good boys and girls in Jesus name. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the night rest. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for life, food, shelter, and most importantly, thank you for the Sabbath day. Please help us to always follow your word. Please help when your friend does something bad. You tell him no and walk away. Please help us to be good boys and girls. Please help us to do well in school when it's test time. Please help us to obey our mommies and daddies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, I'm a promise as they go back. We have a lot of promises here. Amen. of the Lord. The word says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice and this is the time when we will all blend our beautiful voices together for our praise and worship segment. The theme or the sermon's title is serving in my purpose and to serve with purpose we have to be able to know Jesus, know who he really is, so we can then develop our purpose or live our purpose. Our first song will be a hymn. It's 245, more about Jesus I will know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me.
pray that we would start to hunger and thirst for him daily. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Let's all stand as we sing this prayerfully and meditate on the words. Let's all stand. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after After Jesus, we will recognize that the longer we serve him, the sweeter he grows. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows.
Amen. Praise God. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he goes. And I could assure you that next Sabbath and the following Sabbath, we'll have you out of here very early. Amen? Amen. His name is Bradley Noel. He grew up in the community of Makati. He's a humble young man, passionate about the gospel and seeing others become a better version of themselves. He works in the building construction industry and he's currently an entrepreneur with a business called Coats of Quality. So he's a painter by profession. I'm pleased to present to you Noel, passionate about serving Christ daily. The next voice you will hear after Sister Lois would have blessed us with special music would be that of Bradley Noel. morning and a happy Sabbath to everyone. We're pilgrims on a journey of a narrow road. And those who've gone before us line the way. Sharing on the faithful, encouraging stirring testament to God's sustaining grace. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I only heard one side. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Still hearing one side. So we try that again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, so those on the side. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. And all the time. So we just sang a song, Find Us Faithful. Will those who come after you really find you to be faithful? Are you living in a way that those who come behind you will find you to be faithful? Is your devotion burning bright enough that it will motivate and light the path of others to follow? Are you representing Jesus well? Are you stewarding well what God has entrusted unto you? And I want us to think about these questions. So what is the topic for today? Only one person, no? It ain't, it ain't up there. It was supposed to be up there. But the topic for today is serving in my purpose. Serving in my purpose. So we live in a, in a world where there's a lot of talk about finding your purpose, going after your purpose, you know, chasing after your dreams. But sometimes I wonder if what we call purpose is a title. Or if we what we call purpose is status, or position, or a big name, or fame. Is that truly what purpose is? Is that truly your purpose? Is your purpose just to be an elder in a church? Is your purpose just to be a deacon? Just to be a praise team leader? Is your purpose just to be a church member? Just to be a member of a church? Is that truly your purpose? So I want to do this. I, I believe this is a safe place. So by a show of hands, let me see everyone who know for sure that you were born with a purpose for a purpose. You know for sure that you were born with a purpose for a purpose. So everyone, right? You know, some people didn't put in their hand, but you, yes, you were born with a purpose. Now let me see the hands of those who know what your purpose is. A few people. So oftentimes when you ask people, you know, what is your purpose? You know, what, is, what, is, what were you born for? Why do you exist there? They can't give an answer. And sometimes that is because many people have no clear sense of direction for their lives. They're just living. They're just existing. They don't know where they are going. So they have no purpose. They don't know their purpose. Most cannot tell you what their purpose is. But this morning, I'm here to tell you that you are not an accident. You were born with a purpose for a purpose. So you may feel as though you're not important. You know, people may tell you that there's an accident, but you are not an accident. You were created by God for a purpose. Now, have you ever imagined what God can do to your life? What talents or gifts have you been sitting on? What excuses have you made that those excuses have now become a part of your identity? What excuses have you made that they have now become a part of your identity? I believe that some of you sitting here in this room today, you have missed being used powerfully by God simply because you never position yourself to be used by God. You never put yourself in a position to be used by God. You never ask God to be used by him. So as I said before, you're just existing. You're just living. You see, purpose influences the way you conduct your entire life. The late Chadwick Boseman once said, purpose is the reason you are here on the planet. 
at this particular time in history. So you are here today for a purpose. You exist today for a purpose. What is your purpose? As I said, purpose influences the way you conduct your entire life, such as what you spend your money on, your priority, your time. Are you just living? Are you just wasting time? You were born to achieve something significant. The Proverbs writer said in Proverbs 18, 16, a man's Gift makes room for him and brings him before who? The great, right? It does not say your neighbor's gift. It says a man's gift. It doesn't say the gift you wish you had or have, the gift which you have, or the gift you wish you can get. It says a man's gift. Gift. You see, the first step to opening doors for your gift is to make sure that it is your gift. And not your neighbor gift. The verse is saying two things. Number one, your gift will make room for you. And number two, you'll be brought before great men as a result of your gift. In other words, those will be open for you to use your gift for the honor and glory of God. Are you using what God has entrusted to you daily? Not just in church, but daily. And there are examples of men and women in the Bible that used their gift for the honor and glory of God. The first person I want to talk about is Joseph. Now, this story begins with Joseph basically reporting having dreams, right? He went to his brothers and he said, guys, I, I have a dream. You know, we were in the field and your sheaves, you know, they knelt down and they worshipped my sheaf. And they were like, what happened to this? Little boy here. Are you going to rule over us? And this is what it says in Genesis 37, 7 to 8. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and beho behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for the dreams. They hated him even more. And what did they do? They came up with a plan to get rid of Joseph. So they took him, ripped him off his robe, threw him in a pit. And can you imagine these guys, after they did this, they were... You know, they, they, they ate. They felt comfortable with, with what they did. But instead of murdering him, they sold him into slavery. They, they, they worked together, they get rid of him, they sold him into slavery. You see, instead of getting bitter, Joseph decided to get closer to God instead of getting bitter and asking, you know, why me? I, I don't deserve this. I, I'm serving God and I'm doing, doing all of these good things. Why me? This is what the word of God says. In Genesis 39, 3 to 4, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. So Joseph found favor in the sight and attended him. And he gave him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. So that's Potiphar. 
he found himself in a, in a man by the name of Potiphar's house. And probably if it, if it was some of us, we might well have done some really bad work. But Joseph focused on God. And God favored him. God favored him. You see, things were going well and then Potiphar's wife, you know, watching Joseph all the time. She, she looking at him and she probably saying, boy, this young man is real strong. Enough. Look real handsome and thing. And she tried to persuade Joseph into having sex with her. And what did Joseph do? He ran. He ran. And you young men here who are not married yet, run. You have to run. And when Potiphar came home, his wife was like, Joseph raped me. Joseph raped me. And what happened? He was thrown into prison. And throughout this story, there is one team that we keep hearing about. God was with him. God was with him. And God was with him because his focus was on God. His focus was on Christ. Now in this prison, Joseph met two guys who had found themselves in, in trouble also. A cupbearer and a, and a baker. And they also had some, they had some troubling dreams. You remember the dream of the cupbearer? What would have happened? He would have soon be released. And the baker, he would be put to death. And the cupbearer said, Joseph, when I get out, I will remember you. I will put in a good word for you. And it is so with some people. I go ahead and get the work on it. I go talk to my boss. And, but they usually forget about you. And so it was with him. He forgot about Joseph. He remembered Joseph when Pharaoh had some very troubling dreams. And the interpretation of the dreams what that Pharaoh was having was that there will, be, there will come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise great famine. So Joseph came up with a solution. The seven years of plenty? Store up. Store up. And when those seven years ended and the famine started, they had much that surrounding places could have gotten food from them. And this is the best part of the story that I love. Genesis 20, 18 to 21. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. They came for food. They came looking for food. They did not recognize Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. They came and they threw themselves and they said, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he, he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. So they did not recognize Joseph. Joseph recognized them. And when Joseph told them who he was, they were surprised. To the point that they said, just make us your slaves one time. But Joseph said, I'm not in the place of God. I'm not in the place of God. You see, in spite of Joseph being thrown into a pit, sold in slavery, he came out successful. Why? In the midst of Joseph's situation, he trusted God. He kept his focus on God. 
Joseph could have thrown in the towel and said, why is all these things happening to me when I'm focusing on God? My friends, when God has a calling on your life, it is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. There are going to be limitations. There are going to be limitations. So the first thing I want to talk about, the first point I want to throw out this morning, is always follow God's leading and never limit yourself. Always follow the leading of God and never limit yourself. You see, it is very easy to limit yourself. It is very easy to say, I can't do this, or I can't do that. You see, and I believe that you will never be successful, you will never know what your true gift is until you understand your purpose and your potential. The issue is many of us don't know what our gifts are because we don't know our true potential. We don't know our purpose. You see, whatever you were born to do, you are, you are equipped to do. And God will never call you to do an assignment that he will not enable you to do. God will never tell you to do something that will not give you the, 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 the ability and the power and the strength to do. Potential is who you really are. What you are able to accomplish has nothing to do with your parents. It has nothing to do with where you have come from. So probably you are a drug dealer. Probably you are a thief. You are a bad person in the eyes of society. But that doesn't mean God cannot use you. That doesn't mean that God cannot use you for his honor and his glory. Too many times we look at people and we look at them as if they can't change. We look at them as if God cannot work on them. But God is the only person that can change the heart. We need to understand these things as Christians. You see, following your purpose, going after your purpose, has everything to do with focusing on the power that is at work in you. The power of God. If God is working in and through your life, you can do mighty things for him. You can do mighty things for him. You see, and it is key that we be mindful of, our, of our self talks. And the reason why we are to be mindful it is because it is easy to build narratives in our minds and say, boy, I, I can't do this. I, I can't. So have you ever heard these notions? I just don't think I can do this. Well, I am too busy to add that to my life. I'm a busy person. Can't you find somebody else to do that who is more qualified? I'm not a very good speaker, teacher, singer. I am throwing in the towel. The church people are stressing me out, so I ain't going to be forced elder again. No matter I ain't say that. Don't. Nobody cares about me. I don't want any more church office because these church people, they are irritating me. Does this sound familiar to you? Have you ever had these notions? So they sound familiar, but have you ever had those notions? You see, these thoughts are common to all Christians. The Christian life is meant to be lived out, moving forward, not stagnant. The conversation you have with yourself is a direct reflection of your mindset. Do we believe that? And you see, the Bible is filled with examples of people who limited themselves. And one of those examples is Moses. 
Exodus 4, 10 to 11. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow in speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is that I, the Lord? You see, Moses came up with a whole bunch of excuses why he was not the right guy for the job, for the assignment that God was calling him to. He was like, God, with all due respect, you have the wrong guy. And I could imagine, you know, Moses was a sutter, right? I could imagine Moses was there and he was like, God, but I can't get my words right. Probably Moses was like that. I can't speak well. What you're calling me to do, I can't do it. He was basically arguing with God. The word of God says, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and he said, is there not your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. So God always provides what, what you need to accomplish his work. It is not you providing what you need to accomplish God's work on. God always provides what he needs to accomplish his work. The issue is, some of us, we don't focus on what God is providing. We focus on what we want. Friends, oftentimes we assume that God can't use us, perhaps because we may not be as gifted as somebody else. We may not be as educated as someone else. You may not be as experienced as someone else. And when we judge ourselves through the lens of our own eyes, we lose out on our purpose. We lose out on the purpose that God has for us. Stop looking at people and focus on Christ. Stop looking at people. You are not fulfilling their purpose. You are fulfilling God's purpose. Focus on God. Do not limit yourself. You can do this. You can, you, you can serve God in your purpose. And listen to this. Don't talk yourself out of fulfilling your God-given assignment because you do not fit others' idea of an ideal candidate for a position. It is the Lord who appoints. His approval is all you need. So, don't talk yourself out of fulfilling God's purpose for your life simply because someone thinks you are not dying for you. That ain't for you. So, don't talk yourself out of fulfilling God's purpose simply because you were rejected, cast aside. Don't talk yourself out of fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Another example I want to bring to your attention is David. You know, we said at the beginning that your gift will make room for you. The fact of the matter is, when you serve God in your purpose faithfully, those will be open for you. We said that before. This is what Psalms 78, 70 to 72 says. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep folds, from following the ewes that, that had young. He brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So, the, so he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. You see, when you serve God in your purpose, you don't have to worry about a platform or a position or a title or status or fame. 
God knows where to find you. God knows when to promote you. God knows when to use you. God took David from the sheep ends. Not because he sought a position, but because he was serving God in his purpose. Not because he sought a position, not because he was begging to be king, but he served his purpose. So whatever little you are doing for God, do it to the best of your ability. Probably you are clean, probably you are you're a cleaner in the church. Do that to the best of your ability. I'm not saying that is your purpose. But whatever you're doing for God, always do it to the best of your ability. Always. And here is it. 4 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. God looks at the heart. 4 Samuel 16, 11. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet another youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For he will not sit down till he comes here. Now God has sent Samuel the prophet to anoint a new king. Because the previous king, Saul, had disobeyed God. So God had rejected Saul as king. So God said to the prophet, you know, stop grieving over Saul. Get up and go and anoint a new king. In Samuel's estimation, he thought that, yeah, these guys would make really good king. They, they look good. You know, they, they have good builds and they are experienced in fighting. But God said, no, I am not looking at that. I am looking at the heart. Today, you may not feel important. You may not feel qualified, but focus on what you are doing for God and he will elevate you in due, to, in due season. People may view you as unimportant, but God will elevate you in due season. And I'm saying this because this is what the Bible says in 4 Samuel 16, 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. God is going to promote some of you in the midst of some people who rejected you. In the midst of some people who told you no. In the midst of some people who say, he can't do that. She can't do that. That's not for him. That's not for her. God is going to promote you in the midst of some people who said you couldn't. You realize how David's father responded when he was asked for? He didn't say, oh, David is in the back there. He said, oh, the, the shepherd boy, he right this one. There are going to be people who will limit you but focus on God. Follow him. Follow him. You see, and we need to constantly remind ourselves of what the word of God says. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. We need to remind ourselves of the word of God. You see, God created everything with potential. Everything. Genesis 1.12 describes how God created the plants and the trees, each bearing seeds according to their kind. The first chapter of Genesis gives an account of the creation of birds, the, cre the creatures of the sea, the livestock, the creatures 
that move along the ground than the wild animals. They too were given the ability to reproduce according to their kinds. Now, if I had to go in my backyard and plant a potato, you know, the potato, not the vine, the potato, will it grow? You yeah. never see that yet. I, I have never seen that. So let's try something else. Anybody ever see a plum seed? Anybody ever see a plum seed grow? You have to plant a slip, right? Some of us are like the plum seed. We are putting ourselves in positions and things that we can't grow from. That's not our purpose. But if you, put, if you position yourself in your purpose, you will grow. So I have here, so I'm going to illustrate this. Don't ask me for my eggplant, please. So I have an eggplant, right? The eggplant contains seeds, right? So Ella Top is a farmer. Well, that's one of his a farmer. So if Elder Top decide to take this eggplant and just put it on his porch wall, will it grow? Will it grow? No. You have to plant it in the ground. In the right environment. So I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. So if you put this here, I leave this here, and I say, it will grow. It ain't gonna go. It will not go. So it is so with us too. If you put yourselves in the wrong environment, you will not grow. If you put yourself in the wrong places, you will not grow. You will remain stagnant. Many of us are burnt out, stressed out, because we are following things that are not our purpose. We are following things that are not our purpose. So let's say I had to come up here this morning, right? And I had to tap on this and saying one, two, testing, one, two, testing. And then I'm waving up there and I'm saying, why this ain't working? Somebody will, in five seconds, go to Elder Marlon and say, Go and take badly from down there, from up there. Why? Because I'm crazy. And probably my own fiance will call mental health. <laughs> right? So if I had to come here and I have to use this as, as a microphone, you might be wondering if I'm kidding, right? You might say, is Joker? She's joking, man. You see, this podium was designed for a purpose. The phone was designed for a purpose. Everything has their place. So if everything around us have their place, you ain't think God created it for your place? God created you for a purpose. That is why we're a body of believers. So if the hand you know, have to do the, the foot job. If I had to walk in, walk in here on my hands, you might wonder what's going on, right? Or uh, if I had to bounce on my head coming in, you might be wondering what is going on. Everything was designed for a purpose. So if the hand is doing the foot job, then something is wrong. Stay in your lane. Stay in your purpose. Follow your purpose. So maybe you're a strategic, strategic thinker. Maybe you're a great listener. Maybe you are good at motivating others to action with your words. Maybe you are skilled at building things like me and Elota. Maybe you are good at explaining and unpacking scripture. Maybe you have a beautiful voice that you only use in the shower. You see, the things you enjoy doing the things you are good at 
the things that make you feel accomplished and fulfilled, it is possible that these are your God-given abilities. You know, recently I made a statement on social media that you know, a lot of people, you know, raise their eyebrow. I said, the church needs people who can sing. And someone, you know, sent me a message regarding studying beautiful voices. Is that really what we are, we are giving to God? Shouldn't we be giving God the best? Should we be worshiping God in our purpose? You know, I, I was approached to be on the priest team when I, when I came to Carla. And I said, no, I can't, I'll die, die in my thing. Die in my thing. So it is important to follow your purpose. Maybe the things that you enjoy doing are an example of your purpose. So the second thing I want to talk about is have a concrete plan. It is key that you have a concrete plan when it comes to your purpose. You cannot wake up and expect your gift to magically make room for you. You need a plan. Do your research and find out who has been successful in utilizing the same gifts you have. Then exercise patience and pray when planning. So when you are creating your plan, ensure to consult with God. The word of God says in Proverbs 16 3, commit your work to the Lord and He commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. If you don't have a clear purpose, if you don't focus on your purpose, you will be stuck. You will be stuck. You see, when you know and understand that you were born to accomplish something great, no one can stop you. No one can prevent you from accomplishing that purpose. You are the only person that is standing in your own way. You are the only person that is standing in your way. It is important that you, you stay connected to God. If you're going to be successful in your gift, you must have a daily dynamic prayer life. Not you waking up on mornings and saying, boy, the time going on. God, thank you for waking me up, but I got to run. I'm talking about spending time with God. You setting aside time and spending time with him. Is that a reality in your life? You know, sometimes I feel as though, you know, we, we are on a treadmill. You're just going, 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 going. You know, sometimes you, you go to sleep at night and in no time, morning reach. It's like you're on a treadmill, but you have to make time, set aside some, some kind of time to spend with God. Set aside time to spend with God. You see, and many of us want to accomplish great things for our lives. Some of you want to further your education. Some of you, you want to start a business. Some of you, you want to build a house. Some of you want to buy a nice car. But then what? You want to do all of these good things with your life. Then what? You want to have children. Then what? You see, it is important that when we make plans such as these, we give serious attention to what God is calling us to. There has to be something more to life than the things we accumulate. So you want things to be comfortable, you know, while you're living. But is that all you want for your life? Do you want to just become rich? 
Do you want to just do all of this, all of these good things? But not focus on Christ? What is it that you want out of life? What is it that you want out of life? You see, the truth is, you can't tell everyone your plans. People who are going nowhere like to take others with them. So you can't tell everyone your plans. You can't tell everyone your plans. Why? Because some people will try to talk you out of your plans. Saying, I don't think you, you fit for that or not. But once God is calling you to that, and you know for sure that is what God is calling you to, go for it, brother. Go for it, sister. Once you have a clear sense that this is what God wants for your life, you have been seeking after God, you have been praying, go for it. So what I want to talk about is prioritize and be persistent. Prioritize and be persistent. If you're going to move forward, if you're going to make a difference in your generation, if you're going to make a difference in the world, in your community, in your surroundings, you must follow Jesus Christ. You must follow God. It is key that you know where you are going. If I walk in here with a blindfold, I might put up on somebody or I might put on the tree and fall. Have a clear sense of direction of where you are going. And that includes following Jesus. It is not you going where you want or where you feel you want to go. But you truly following Jesus. If you want to be successful, you must set priorities for yourself in relation to your vision. Write them down and pray about them. This, the kind of decisions you are making today will determine your outcome. It is important that we know that sometimes our vision may call for us to step out of our comfort zone. So the question is, the only time you talk about God, is it just when you come to church? Are you being a, a witness in your workplace? In your workplace? Are you being a, a witness of Christ in your community? The only way to overcome being stagnant is to be passionate about your vision. And the last thing I want to talk about is recognize and be aware of people's influence. Recognize and be aware of people's influence. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived, bad company ruin good morals. So just to give you a little context, in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the apostle Paul wrote of the false teachers who had come into the church of Corinth teaching that the resurrection of Jesus Christ wasn't true. So they, they were teaching false doctrine. And Paul said, don't associate yourself with these people. They will corrupt you. And it is important that we know our circle and who we allow, allow ourselves to be influenced by. Many people are stagnant because of their circle. You know, young people often talk about, oh, my circle is small. You know, my circle is small. But your circle can be small, but be keeping you stagnant. Be mindful of who you associate yourself with. Be mindful of who you allow yourself to be influenced by. The people you are allowing in your space, are they good for you? Are they genuine? Are they for you or against you? 
There's an old adage that says, not every skin teeth. Genuine. Right? You must be careful who you allow yourself to be influenced by. Your environment determines your mindset. And your mindset determines your future. Don't allow anyone or anything to stop you from fulfilling God's plan for your life. You see, many people want you to be what they want you to be. Not what God wants you to be. I will repeat it. Many people want you to be what they want you to be. Not what God wants you to be. Not what you were born to be. And often they end up limiting you. Each and every one of us were blessed with God-given abilities. The gift you may have, I may not have. And the joy and privilege is, I don't have to feel bad about the gifts that God did not give me if I'm maximizing God in the ones that he gave to me. Maximize God. Serve him in the gifts that he gave to you. Don't be afraid to disassort, uh, disassociate yourself from people who are not right for you. Spend major time with positive influence and minor time with negative influence. Uh, no time at all with negative influence. Proverbs 11:14 says, Where there is no guidance, a people fall. But in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. Be willing to learn. Be willing to be taught. You don't know everything. Be willing to learn and be willing to be taught. Some of us, like I remember this week, I, I really had to laugh. I really had to laugh. Someone from a certain denomination, certain religion, certain seven-day religion, you know, sent me a message. You know, having a, a normal conversation and started asking some questions, you know. How did us come? Can I test in your knowledge? Oh, probably we can have Bible study sometimes. Um, and I, I, I can probably edify you. There, there, there are some people, they always want to teach, but they don't, they don't want to be taught. They don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. Be teachable. Learn to listen sometimes. You can't grow if you don't listen. You can't become better if you don't listen. For those of you who are in relationships and you know, you're becoming excited about marriage, ensure, ensure that the person that you are with will be a good encouragement to your ministry, to your gift. If in your mind, you, you're realizing, boy, this person is going to sabotage this whole thing, run. 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 It is important to protect your mental health. Your, 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 your environment is your space, isn't it? It's, it's your space. You have to protect your space. It will be hard to see whether or not the influence you are receiving or allowing is good for you if you are not listening, if you are not absorbing. You know, many people usually say, Chanel, brother, don't talk. I'm a quiet. I'm a quiet. I'm a quiet person. But most of the time, I'm observing. Most of the time, I'm observing and seeing exactly who I want to associate myself with. So when you see my, in my corner, I'm observing. Be observant. Be like Bradley. Be observant. Absorb people and see whether or not they are good. For you. 
So the question is, who are you listening to? Who are you allowing yourself to be influenced by? And I know I have been long up here. So how should this all apply to each and every one of us? How should this apply? The word of God says in Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Colossians 3.23 Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Work for the Lord and not men. You see, your purpose is not just to have a church office. Your purpose isn't to just have a church office. I'll repeat it. Your purpose is to serve God daily. And to ensure that people are seeing God in you. You know, there's a story about a young man who died. And when his co-workers went to the funeral, the church members, you know, when they're giving the tribute, they're addressing him as, as brother. And to their, themselves, they were like, he was a Christian? Mercy. If people kind of see God in you daily, outside of Sabbath, something wrong. The word of God says to remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, right? But some of, us, some of us only remember on Sabbath day. Some of us only remember on Sabbath day. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. God has given you everything you need to fulfill his purpose for your life. The fact that you were born is evidence that you possess something that can benefit the world. God gave you potential for the blessing of future generations. Your purpose or gifts goes beyond the church office. Be passionate about serving God to your purpose. God, let me run that again. Be passionate about your purpose or serving God with your gift, but never neglect valuable relationships. Never neglect valuable relationship. Some of us, let me not say, some, some, some of our elders, our, our deacons, you spend more time in the church than you spend with your family. Don't neglect valuable relationships. I'm come, I, I see somebody in the back, don't me that, but I'm coming to the end. Let me end, please. So, let me end. I, I won't read the rest. So, we'll end with, you got this. You got this. Go and do what God has enabled you to do. Go and do what God has enabled you to do. So, I'll come down now because I'm, I'm boring some people. But, if you are sitting here today, if you are sitting here today, if you are sitting here today, you are not a Christian, you are not, and you want to say, God, I want to serve you in my purpose. And if you are a Christian, you, you, you want to say, God, I want to serve you. I want you to be known through my life. You know, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You want to say, God, I want you to be known through my life. And as the worship team comes, as the worship team comes, if you do not remember anything else, let this question resonate in your mind. Are you willing to say today that, Lord, I want to do great things for you. I want to magnify you, maximize you in my gift for your honor and for your glory. Are you willing to say that today? Bradley for the proclamation 
of God's word. May the Lord bless you, Brother Bradley, as you continue to fulfill the purpose God has given to you. And may God continue to bless all of us as we too endeavor not only to find the purpose, but to fulfill the purpose God has in store for us. Our closing song is, Oh brother, be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. Number 602 in our SDA hymnals. Loving Father, we want to thank you, oh God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning and for bringing us here. We thank you for the message that we received, and we ask, oh God, that it would not just stay here, but that we would internalize it and live it. Continue to be with us till she comes. Save us all for Christ's sake. Amen. from the 